If your pain hurts and it hurts real bad, or if you have feelings that are making you sad, then it's okay, it's okay to cry. Throughout the entirety of the Hugbox Chronicles videos that I've done, it's always focused on an individual or a group that was at the center of an event. Now, usually that event is fairly mundane. They said something or they did something that caused a massive overreaction. People flip their shit. And these videos are dedicated to observing that and talking about it because it's usually very, very entertaining to watch. You get a bunch of people spurging the fuck out and you got a good 20 minutes of entertainment out of it. But never once in any of these videos was I at the center of the Tism Storm until today. Now, for those of you that don't know, I recently started a series on my YouTube channel called Deviants. It is a very kind and gentle introspective journey into the different groups and mindsets of individuals that have specific interests on DeviantArt. Well, wouldn't you know it? People flip their shit. Now, I was up to episode number three of this fantastic series, but there are only two episodes now currently available on my channel. That is because I was at the center of a massive flagging campaign to get the third one removed. Now, I'll talk about that later on, but I want to start this journey of autism, this adventure of Asperger's. I want to begin it at the beginning. And what better fucking place to begin it than with the YouTube commentary community? You know, I thought that was dead. I don't know how that zombie shambled out onto the ditch that it was put in four or five years ago, but somehow, somehow, it's still walking around. So imagine my excitement when this living dead thing shambled its way on over to me in the form of this amazing video entitled King Shaming Isn't My Fetish, Mr. Mediker, by Internet Freedom Fighter Doodle Tones. So let me get one of the more fun questions out of the way. What is my sexuality? I consider myself to be asexual. Well, fan-fucking-tastic. What a great start to a video. I love me a tranny with a voice changer who happens to tell me every possible second of the day that they're asexual. Gotta get that fact out there. Very important that people know you're asexual. Every fucking moment of the day. As I feel the way he went about this video left a rather sour taste in my mouth. Are you sure that sour taste in your mouth is from my video and not the hormones you're taking right now? Just, just saying. Already, you're showing me how much you are ready to mock people just because they love the idea of being inflated like a balloon. Yes. Yes, I absolutely am mocking them because they want to be inflated like a balloon. How is that hard to understand? And you going out of your way to find this, to hassle them for this stuff, is almost borderline harassment, Jim. Uh-oh. I'm harassing people. Fuck you, you are actively telling your viewers, hey, go harass this kid who basically draws inflation because I don't like it. This isn't a term I throw around lightly, but you are starting a lynch mob, Jim. A lynch mob? Well, I'm just going to add that to the list of accomplishments. If you wanted to riff on the art, that's one thing. But I cannot sit here and enjoy someone who is advocating for cyber harassment. Cyber harassment. Not just normal harassment. It's gone digital. You're just another blatant cyber bully. Just another blatant cyber bully. Well, you can see Doodle Tunes was a little bit upset. They, they didn't like my video because I had encouraged people at the behest, mind you, of the artist, to go and leave a comment. And I even said positive feedback. But apparently that is inciting a lynch mob in the minds of a transsexual slime girl on YouTube. Now, Doodle Tones, well, she had... Wait, what am I doing? He had... He had more to say about this. This video, I stand behind this. This is from their Deviant Art account. It pisses me off that people find this stuff and feel the need to harass people, and in some cases, start lynch mobs about people because some people want to express their kinks in a harmless way. This is a question from Masatima. I've been thinking, your video, Mr. Mediker, were you trolling? P.S. I'm not on any side or anything. I thought both sides were wrong. My favorite part of this is at the very end because it gives a really great insight. I think so far it's been worth it. Being the first to call out a name as big as Mr. Mediker because truth be told, I think this is something he's needed for a while. Well, thank God, Doodle Tones is there to call me out. It's something I've needed for a while. What with leading all these lynch mobs, it's very important that somebody stop me before more innocent people are hurt. So besides the protecting the innocent thing, what, uh, what other reasons would Doodle Tones have had to make a commentary on my video? I mean, they seemed a little bit upset. They needed to call me out. It's something that's gone on far too long. It's a lynch mob. Seems to be a bit personally invested. A little bit personally invested. What what could possibly... Oh, wait. Regarding the sudden censors. From Doodle Tones. So, I'm moving accounts. 
Why? Because my grandmother thinks I have a mental illness and doesn't realize some of the stuff I post online may be for fun. A mental illness? What? What could possibly have made your grandmother think you have a mental illness? Oh. Oh, maybe it, maybe it's... is it that? ABDL? Adult Baby Diaper Lover Role Playing Group? Doodle Tones, or should I call you by your proper name? Doodle Diapers. Doodle Diapers, do you get off on shitting yourself? Is that what this is about? Are you Were you upset that there's a potential that I may end up doing a video on diaper shitting? And that's why you, uh, you went off on a tangent for the inflationist defending them? Well, maybe that's not it. I mean, maybe it's just plain and simple ego. I mean, they do talk like they're in a holy crusade, like they're going to teach me a lesson because somebody needs to do it, but here comes doodle diapers to fight that battle. Did you know there's a commentary database wiki? Neither did I. I don't know why it needs to exist, but it does. Now, one of the interesting things about that wiki is Doodle Tones has an article, and the article contains a lot of factual information, how many subs they've had, the different different accounts that they've had previously. But one of the interesting things about Doodle Tones' specific entry is who edits it. Somebody by the name of Susie Doodle. I wonder who could Susie Doodle be? Who could be entering all these different edits on this particular article? Oh, wait, why does that sound for Oh. Oh. Previous channel, Susie Doodle. So, once this video goes up, there's a bit of a reaction. I, of course, have a laugh at it because it's fucking retarded. Everything about it is fucking retarded. But people, people rally around Doodles. They, they won't let her diapers die in vain. And we get some fantastic art, like this piece, that one of her friends put up on DeviantArt. I think this might, he might actually be teleporting behind me. Colon 3 teleports behind me. That's what's happening in this picture. I'm leading, that's my lynch mob right there. I'm, I'm surrounding doodle diapers. Doodle diapers is going to die. You can tell these people are really high quality banter enthusiasts. They really know how to bring that hot shit. They spit the fire. Like this amazing tweet. Really big mistakes. A fucking sick burn, bro. Fucking sick burn. I wonder who that is. I want to know the master of bants that came up with that. Oh, he looks, he looks like a badass. He looks like a badass. My God. My subscriber count. Son of Sparta. More like son of Sperta. Try sticking that giant fucking eraser in your mouth and evening out that speech impediment. Why, what? My, what, 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 what? Twitter was awash with the best of bands coming from the YouTube commentary community and the DA Tartlet community. Dis about Mr. Medicare? He's honestly a piss baby, but it's not just him. He's basically if Red Supre was politically motivated. It's a huge conflict of interest that irks me. Politically motivated. Red Supre. Politically motivated. Red Supre. Conflict of interest. I don't know what the fuck this person's talking about. It's like a word salad. It's a word salad and they're bulimic. And they're just barfing up nonsense. I, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But it wasn't just Twitter. No, it was the comment section of Doodle Diaper's video itself. Now, I went there, as the nice guy that I am, and said, I've heard of this bastard. I know what you're talking about. He's a dangerous individual. And of course, of course, they took it very well. They all took it very well, my presence on that video. But it was one comment in particular that would be the very upper edge, the very tip of a fucking autism motherload that I was going to crack into. I found the vein that goes deep. And that vein is for no good reason. Hi there, kiddo. I think we got business later. Well, holy shit. I fucked with the wrong individual. Look at that badass. And he's got business with me later. I don't know about that. That sounds a little sounds a little risky. What kind of business do you have with me, mister? Now, this is a very special individual, and you're going to find out why as we go in depth to explain who the fuck this is and just how autistic they are. Now, our first actual interaction was on Twitter. I had casually said that I needed an adult because some strange man on the internet was talking to me. His response was, Will you hold my hand in the moonlight? No, but I'll hold the rope while they bring you to the tree. As you can tell, we are going to be the best of friends. And in very short order from that tweet going up, he produced a video. Mr. Medicare tells you what you can like for no good reason. Mr. Medicare, I've been told you like a good fight. I've also been told that H-Han blows you. And I see Armored Skeptic there in your comments. Oh, what the hell? I, I think I'll patron smacking you around on YouTube. Let's see what you can do, kiddo. 
Well, I do love a good fight. I'm not so sure about 8chan blowing me, though. And I don't know what the fuck Armored Skeptic has to do with any of this. In fact, that seems to be a theme in his video. You're going to notice that going forward. He talks about a lot of unrelated shit, like the first three minutes of this video that I cut out completely, which was talking about something completely fucking off-topic. Be an art. And just do a search. You would get 139,008 results for inflation along with the knowledge that God is dead. Yep, another armored skeptic faggot whining about God being dead. Because his life sucks. Well, I'm a Catholic puddin', let's dance. You know, one of the classic signs of being on the autism spectrum, especially towards the end that used to occupy Asperger's syndrome, was that you can't pick up on social cues, and that you also don't get humor. Satire, jokes, it goes right over your head. You take it literally, like taking what I just said, as a statement of my non-faith as an atheist, rather than the punchline to a fucking joke. Okay, back when I was 21, I dated a furry. Shocking. Who saw that coming? I better be careful. If I make this too obvious, the armored skeptic is going to want to blow me too. He sure seems to hate the armored skeptic. It's a little bit weird to make a video directed at me where you talk about armored skeptic this fucking much. But you put that close enough together for your simple-ass, dumpy, fuckface fans could come to that conclusion. No wonder 8chan worships you. It's like I'm finally getting the chance to take the piss out of Anon. Oh, buddy boy, this has been a long time coming. Again, I don't know what the fuck this has to do with the cowboard, or Armored Skeptic, or the guy you talked about for three minutes at the start of the video. But you should be queuing in on as you're watching this. That for no good reason, has a little bit of a tism problem. A tiny bit of the tism. I, like, I can't do this anymore. So this is what I'm going to do. Like when I did with Phantom Menace. You, me, hard as you can. You go off and slap the shit out of me. I highly suspect you won't because I noticed that Phantom Menace got all brave on your Twitter. Oh, hillbilly boy, when your hero here doesn't pipe up, I'm about to make an example out of your ass. See you soon. Well, the gauntlet's been thrown. I mean, how can I avoid a challenge? I love a good challenge. And so I offered it to him. You, me, hard as you can. Well, I mean, if you insist, I'm always glad to have guests on Meadowcast. What days work for you? But of course, because for no good reason is a giant walking vagina. He couldn't just do it on his own. After all that shit talk, after a video directly challenging me, after all the comments on Twitter and in the comment section of YouTube videos, he demanded that people come with him. He wanted a backup crew. He wanted his posse to roll along with him onto Meadowcast. Being the nice guy that I am, I acquiesced. I told him, sure, we can do that. He asked for specific days and specific times. I gave in to that as well. And so an agreement was reached. He was going to finally show me my place. He was going to teach me a lesson I would never forget. The stream was set up. I advertised it. It was going to be at 6 p.m. on a Tuesday. He had his friends that were going to come with him, and we were going to see just how hot his banter was, how good the points he could drive home were going to be. But within a few hours, a few hours of that agreement, things already started to go south. The first sign trouble was on its way was when he tried to reconfirm the time with me. Now, the reason that would be a problem is because he enthusiastically agreed on the specific time we had set up. And it clearly lists the day, time, and time zone of when that's going to be. More than that, he was retweeting people that were talking about the specific fucking time. And it wasn't just myself that was picking up on these nervous behaviors. This dude is totally going to bail. What a coward. Well, that guy totally fucking called it. We've decided to fuck off, Mang. Have a nice day. This is within 24 hours of agreeing to all his demands, giving him the time he wanted, allowing him to bring people with him, and he decides not to do it. All right, so here's my official answer. I'm bitching out. You've defeated Mighty 4chan, man. I'm not, I'm not sure if he calls himself that, if that's like his own little superhero name. Does he, does he call himself Mighty 4chan, man? Is that why he hates me, because he thinks I'm 8chan, man? Are we having a Chan war, Anthony? Is that what we're doing? Or is it maybe that you're fucking retarded and you're a coward? See, I have no problem with people running their mouth. They do it all the time. I have no problem with people shit-talking and shit-posting. I love it. I engage in it. But that's not what Anthony was doing. Anthony means what Anthony says. He wanted to come at me, and I gave him the opportunity. I handed it to him on a golden platter, and he backed out. Now, why did he back out after being given everything that he wanted? Well, at first he had said, it's because of work. He wanted me to get on Skype with him because he wanted to tell me that he had a work shift to attend and he wouldn't be able to make the cast. But you know what's strange about that, Anthony? Is the fact that you were on Twitter at 6 p.m. on the day of the Meadowcast talking about videos you were uploading at that very moment. 
and updating other sites that you go to. So if you're working this back-breaking, arduous 12-hour work shift, why are you on social media at the very moment you ducked out of my cast to upload shit and to tweet shit and to write journals and to comment on videos? It's almost like that excuse was complete bullshit. But Anthony's not just a massive fucking pussy. He can't accept responsibility for his own fuck-ups. He made himself look like an asshole, and people wrote him very hard for that. When it turned out his bullshit work excuse wasn't going to fly, he tried to cast the blame off himself. And he did that by saying, well, if this person agrees to do a stream with me, I'll do my stream with you, Jim. But if they don't agree, well, then it's their fault I don't show up for your stream. He even went so far as to make a fucking video blatantly saying that. Horse News and Mr. Medicare. And this is how it's gonna go. Dear Horse News and Mr. Medicare, recently I've declined the chance to be on Mr. Medicare's podcast. Horse News attempted to shame me down about it, and I turned around and lovingly reminded them that Capper General has dick tucked my podcast on two to three offers. So I counter offered that Capper could agree to come on my show, and I'll go on Mr. Medicare's Tuesday. I seem to recall when we were establishing duking it out, you reminded me of the terms as follows. As hard as I can. Is what I'm doing underhanded, sneaky, weasley, conduct unbecoming a gentleman? By all means, you can distance yourself from me. You can say, I, the internet aristocrat, will have nothing to do with you. Do not talk about me. Mr. Medicare, I don't respect or like you. I thought I'd made that abundantly clear, and you seem to return the same tone in kind. I'm not holding to you because you fight feminism or 8chan worships you. I'm sorry that your moral fifis have been hurt, and you can go cry on Tumblr now. No, Anthony, my fifis aren't hurt. What's hurt is your credibility, your respectability, is your ability to go online and not be laughed at for being a giant fucking pussy. Your attempt at puppet mastering your way out of this falls flat. Everybody can see through it. This has jack shit to do with horse news not going on your fucking retarded podcast. Your original excuse was you could not make the podcast because of work. Now, if that was true at all, you wouldn't be willing to come to the podcast because you'd be working. You could never honor this agreement. So this either means you were initially lying about having work in the first place, or you're lying now about being able to show up. So are you a liar, or are you just a simple coward who's looking to make somebody else look bad to avoid looking bad for ducking out on me in the first place? So just what kind of person is for no good reason? What kind of a man is Anthony? Aside from being a giant fucking vagina who needs to invite friends on and then makes up, you know, excuses for why he can't make it and lies about those excuses and then tries to throw the blame onto other people. What sort of character does this man have? The kind of person that dates a furry. Okay, back when I was 21, I dated a furry. Well, Anthony has quite the interesting internet record. For one thing, he's the kind of man that has 4,000 alternate accounts. He's also the kind of man that's too fucking stupid to hide what he does with those accounts. If you look at this list and then go check on YouTube and do this quickly because he's going to be covering this up, you will see that he subscribes to every one of his own channels and then likes all the uploads that he puts up. It's not just his channels for no good reason or fan and frenzy. He's got multiple channels, all of which like his own content and subscribe to himself. That is why this untalented piece of horseshit looks like he actually has a position in the brony analyst YouTube community. Because that's a thing. That's a thing. This furry dating, 36-year-old, lives at home with his mother, autist, is a part of. But he's not just a pathetic sort of son of a bitch that only likes and watches his own content because nobody else will. He's also a cuck. And I don't mean that in the playful banter way of just calling people cuck because you find it funny. He's a literal cuck. In an article entitled Brone Analyst, Bilks CAD $7,432 of Booty by Beguiling Brainwashed Bronies by Tweefag, we find out a good deal about who for no good reason is. The article goes in depth covering this, and I will link it in the description. Everything I'm going to be talking about will be linked in the description for you to go and read. But I'll sum it up shortly. There once was a woman who was a brony analyst on YouTube. Somebody threw a pop can at her. This is an artist representation of the incident. Oh my god, so traumatic. So, so traumatic. Look at that abuse. Well, she needed money to get out of there. I don't know if you've ever had a pop can thrown at you, but it's a fucking traumatic experience. So she began to set up GoFundMes and Indiegogo campaigns to get money to, to get out of that abusive Pepsi-throwing household. Only it turns out she used the money for shit not related at all to moving out. She went to conventions, she bought shit on fucking Amazon, she wasted the cash on shit, not at all related to why she was gathering it. Do you know who she was dating while this was going on? For no good reason. But the story gets even better. 
Not only was he dating a brony scam artist, she cucked him. One of the comments in the comment section of a related article, again, it will be linked because it talks about, for no good reason, in depth, says the following. Well, since Horse News won't tell it, I will. The other guy Fallen Wish got a good fuck with at the BronyCon orgy. BronyCon orgy is no other than Tuntricity 2K, the same asshole who tried to overdue the GoFundMe Jew scam Fallen Wish did by taking $1,355 from her, and Tan didn't give $700 back. It's right here. Oh, and by the way, FNGR and Tuntricity 2K are real buddies, which is kind of ironic when you see fucking no good reason talking shit about people at the Rift Cafe or most of the analyst community Tuntricity is a part of. It could also mean Tuntricity 2K has the same mindset of FNGR, but just hides it. Birds of a feather flock together. I want you to drink that in for a moment. This 36-year-old lives at home with his mother, brony analyst who dates furries, also got cucked by a woman who scammed the community he's a part of. Then she went and fucked his friend at a brony con orgy while he sat at home crying and raising money for her. Now you would think if somebody's that fucking dumb that they would fall for a scam like that that it would never ever happen again. You would be wrong. Welcome to Autism City. Population retardation. Please help Quillstroke and Geeky Steven King L journal by for no good reason up on his DeviantArt account. This was put up a week or so ago. I've had the opportunity to talk to Quillstroke in the past. Recently, sorry, I'm tired. Internet stuff going on. Her computer was completely destroyed by her family. The term toxic has been kicked around till it has no meaning anymore. So I'll simply say that she's worse off than anyone deserves, much less someone as respectful and enduring to be around. There's a link to the GoFundMe. Now I know a lot of these are going around, and there are certain people that do use these things for less than earnest ends. You can trust Quillstroke isn't going to go out and buy a 3DS with his money or drop $200 on fan service. Not name-dropping anyone. You want a ringing endorsement? Quillstroke has never pissed me off. At least that I can remember. So I'm glad to back her up here. This dumb motherfucker falls for a scam once. He's dating a girl that lies to him, fucks a friend of his, and steals money from the community he considers himself to be a part of, and he doesn't learn jack or shit from it. He is now doing the exact same thing again and guaranteeing other people that they're not going to get robbed, that they can trust his judgment. What judgment is that exactly? The same judgment that robbed people of 7,500 fucking dollars before? And what toxic environment is she in? Her brother destroyed her computer, so she obviously needs to get out of the house. Oh, I weep for her. That's almost right up there with getting a Pepsi can thrown at you. Now, I'm not saying the brony community is full of retards, but a good portion of it, a good portion of it, might be. It seems that you can put anything up on Indiegogo and they will fucking throw money at you. You could make up any bizarre bullshit story, and people like for no good reason are going to get you money. They are going to guarantee your earnestness and trustworthiness, and they are going to get the rest of their community to give you cash. Doesn't matter what you say, you could make up anything, and dipshits like this fucking cuck will get you paid. So we've established that he is a giant fucking vagina, that he is a massive coward, that he can't fight his own battles, that he lies about why he can't fight those battles, that he tries to pass off blame onto other people, that he's a cuck who gets scammed and falls for the same scam again and again and again. But he's also the kind of person that's so hated by even his close circle of friends that they dump chat logs of the things he says in private. You can find these Skype logs up on numerous threads on numerous websites. They didn't just post them in one place. They posted them all over the place. Chat log after chat log after chat log of people who can't stand his ass and want you to see how retarded he is when he's talking in private. I don't know if I can convey just how much of a spur this retard is, but I can share with you the numerous communities that are currently talking about him and his previous exploits. All the links for these will be in the description below. Of course, you have Encyclopedia Dramatica. He has his own ED article up there. Then there's Horse News, who has multiple articles up about him, with one specifically talking about him being a Spurg. There's Kiwi Farms. He has his own thread on Kiwi Farms. And of course, not to be outdone, he's got a cow thread. Not the first one, mind you. There have been a couple. This is just the newest one. If you'd like to know more about this future suicide, click the links in the description. Go read up on it. It is fascinating. His internet history and spurgery is very, very entertaining, and there are multiple sites that will cater to your interest with different screen caps and background story. Now, a few of the interesting things that have emerged since I did this Deviant series was the argument that's been presented by people like For No Good Reason and Doodle Diapers. 
it's this idea that I am harshly attacking somebody, that I am punching down. That's a phrase that I've seen pop up in the comments and in different websites that have talked about the videos themselves. Now this reminds me of something called troll shielding. Troll shielding, for those that don't know, is the practice of joining a group of people that troll others in an attempt to protect yourself. It's very straightforward. If you don't want to be fucked with, hang out with the people that fuck with other people. Because then you're safe. They'll never, they'll never target you. You're a friend. You're in the in-group. Well, to me, punching down and low-hanging fruit kind of falls into the same camp. It's under a general umbrella of what troll shielding is. With people like For No Good Reason and Doodle Diapers, they're engaged in some weird shit. Doodle Diapers has a diaper fetish, they're in all these different role-playing groups. Anthony fucks furries and gets cucked by brony chicks that run scams. He's got a fat fetish. And so they use this argument of bullying, of harassment. They say you're punching down, that you're picking low-hanging fruit, because they'd want to create an arbitrary list of the do's and don'ts of what is acceptable and unacceptable in an effort to save their own ass. Because if you're making fun of retards, chances are eventually you're going to make fun of them, because they share quite a few characteristics with the people you're already mocking. It's a form of troll shielding. They're not your friend. They're not in the in-group. So instead, they try to create some list and make you adhere to it. They try to get you to enter into an agreement with them that, yeah, we can make fun of this, but we can't make fun of that. Yeah, we can make a joke about this, but that's not acceptable. And it's not because they really give two flying fucks about the people you're making fun of. They're just trying to save their own ass. That's all it is. Another thing I've noticed with this particular group, these commentators and analysts, is they like to talk a boatload of shit and then never back any of it up. Not just Doodle Diapers, not just Anthony, not all the people that sent... Not all the people that sent different tweets and left different comments, but it just kept repeating itself. One last example of this would be a YouTuber by the name of Dylan. Now, Dylan made a video about a video about a video. It's a commentary on a commentary on a commentary. Again, like the fucking old days of YouTube, shit that should be dead, but somehow still survives. And in that video, he made some not-so-subtle allegations about me being a harasser, a cyber bully, about me sending out people to go harass other people. The same kind of shit that Doodle Diapers was raising in her video, and it's not surprising because they're friends. They do streams together, they hang out together. So he releases his video, and then he goes on to Twitter, and he talks a boatload of shit. Is this sounding familiar? Mr. Medica fans, come get me. You're all special ed kids. I'm not afraid of you. Bring it. Show me the best you've got. So people oblige him. And two hours later, and over 100 blocks later, he is no longer saying that. He went from making Slenderman jokes and posting XD in every single tweet to screaming cunt and blocking every single person in sight. Not just on Twitter, even on YouTube, on his own video, saying that he wasn't going to put up with it. It wasn't fair critique, so he was going to delete those comments. And the craziest thing about it is, these people are not the worst. This is just the appetizer. The main course is coming up because the worst people are the diaper lover community. The people that I briefly, briefly touched on at the very end of episode 3. The people that flagged a video. The people that threatened me with lawsuits, with the police arresting me, with having my channels and social media accounts shut down, and sent me death threats because of 9 seconds of audio at the end of one video.